In this video, I'm going to be going over the three tiers of DO medical schools and the average MCAT and GPA that the schools in each specific tier normally accept. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to the channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Michael and I am currently in a biomedical science master's program before I go to medical school. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button because you don't want to miss out on any of the great content that I have coming your guys' way. So with that being said, guys, let's get right into the video. And so last week I attended a conference here at school and it was all about how to apply to medical school. And one of the big topics that they brought up were the three tiers of DO medical schools and which one you should be applying to. And so one of the biggest mistakes that an applicant can have is not being truly honest with themselves with regards to which schools they can actually get into. And so I hope by watching this video, you guys can optimize your chances of getting into a medical school. Because whether we like it or not, med schools are going to filter our applications out by our MCAT and our GPA first. And so it's in our best interest and your best interest to apply to a medical school that your grades match up with. And so before making this video, I was doing some research, trying to find information out there about the three tiers of DO schools. I was looking on YouTube, I was looking online, and really there's not that much information on this topic. And I just found that really weird because you wanna optimize your chances of getting into medical school. Like it's hard enough trying to get in, but if you're applying to a school where they're just gonna throw out your application because you have a slightly lower MCAT score, that's just kind of a crappy situation to be in. And so before I show you guys the tiers and the schools that are within each tier, and then the average MCAT and GPA that each school accepts, I wanna tell you where I got this information from. So I attended a conference last week for school and it was all about how to get into medical school and how to apply to medical school. And essentially, I'm gonna show you guys the same information that they showed me. And so the big kicker is that the people presenting this information are actually on the med school admissions committee. So this is information coming directly from an admissions committee for medical school, and they're literally telling us how they accept and how they go about looking at people's applications. And unfortunately, during this conference, the Med School Admissions Committee broke um, a bit of bad news to us, um, and it's something that no pre-med student wants to hear, and that is that they primarily filter out the applications first by MCAT and GPA score. And so by watching the rest of this video, it's gonna be crucial and vital to your success on whether you get into a med school or not. And so you guys probably know that there's no real official way of ranking these schools. That's why it's so important that a med school admissions committee sat down and picked out the schools that they thought were the top ranking schools. And so this isn't just my opinion, this is coming from people that have worked at several different medical institutions and medical schools and they together have come up with these three different tiers. And so guys, as you can see in tier one, um, a lot of the schools here are in large cities, metropolitan cities. And that's because a lot of people wanna be um, near a big city. They don't wanna be out in nowhere. Um, and a lot of DO schools are out in nowhere. And so just take a look at some of the schools that are here and I'll be going over their um, MCAT and GPA scores. Um, in just a second. Okay, so here's tier two. So take a look at these schools. Um, and these schools are gonna accept a slightly lower MCAT and GPA. So keep that in mind. And like I said, we're gonna go over MCAT and GPA in just a second. And so notice that these schools are still in slightly larger cities. Um, but the reason that they're tier two, in my opinion, is because they're gonna accept a lower MCAT and a lower GPA. Not to mention they're on the newer side of the DO schools. Not to say that they're super new, but they're probably newer than the tier one schools. Which leads me to tier three. And a lot of the schools in tier three are gonna be your newest DO schools. Um, they're also gonna be smaller schools and they're also gonna be in smaller towns. And so if you ask me, it really doesn't matter where you go to medical school. 
They're still going to teach you pharmacology. They're still going to teach you anatomy. And trust me, the human body is the same at Harvard as it is at William Carey University. And so in my opinion, the only difference between William Carey University and Harvard is the name. And trust me, you guys, you will be paying for the name. And I guess one thing to keep in mind, guys, is I was actually watching a YouTuber, um, and he's a general surgery physician. Um, his name is Buck Parker, MD. Um, so that's his channel name. So go check him out, because he actually has some good points on whether to go to a big school or a small school, or whether to go to a prestigious school or not. And one of the things that he said was the person that you become is similar to the people that you surround yourself with. And so these larger institutions are probably going to have the best of the best with regards to professors and physicians that are teaching your med school classes. And so if you want to be the best, then you have to surround yourself with the best. And so I kind of liked that philosophy that he had. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind when you are deciding which school to apply to and which school to go to. Okay, so here are the MCAT and GPA averages that these schools usually take. Um, and as you can see, Tier 1 is much higher than Tier 3. And something that this Med School Admissions Committee told us during this conference was, as you can see on Tier 3, the lowest um, MCAT score is a 495. So they said if you have below a 495, it is a must that you must retake the MCAT. Um, there is no discussion there. Um, you must retake it if you're below a 495. Um, and even if you're at a 495, I would suggest retaking it anyways because the likelihood of you going down is far less than you going up. And another piece of advice, as you can see on Tier 3, um, and the reason I'm talking about this is because I assume that most of you watching probably are in this tier. You probably have a lower MCAT and a lower GPA. Um, but if you don't, then uh, you don't have to really listen to what I'm saying. But if you have below a 2.95 GPA, then a good idea would be to enroll in a master's program like I am. Um, there are plenty of master's programs out there, um, but I would suggest picking one that is taught at a medical school. And so by doing this, you are setting yourself up for success. Um, generally, if you do well in the master's programs, then you are guaranteed an interview spot at their med school. So that's why I suggest doing the master's at a med school. The only con to doing a master's program, you guys, and pay attention to this, is if you do poorly in a master's program after doing poorly in undergrad, it will be extremely difficult to get into a U.S. medical school. And at that point, guys, I would suggest looking into Caribbean schools. And I think it's so funny that when people talk about Caribbean schools, it has such a negative connotation. But I know plenty of successful physicians that went to a Caribbean school, they got a residency in the United States, and now they're practicing as full-blown board-certified physicians. So if you're worried about going to a Caribbean school, you shouldn't be, and you should go if you have a low MCAT and a low GPA. Um, but I honestly would use it as a last resort type of thing because why make things harder than they have to be? So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions, just drop them down in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, I'm curious to see if like you guys think a certain school shouldn't be in one of the tiers that I showed you. Um, keep in mind that this was not my doing. This was a med school admissions committee that came up with these tiers and put those specific schools in each tier. So if you guys think that a different school should be in another tier, put that down in the comments below. And so if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button because it helps me out and it helps the channel out. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video.